So one time I got a, I got a burr underneath my sandal, uh, saddle and I quit. And the CEO comes into my office and says, oh, Jeff, I'm so sorry you're quitting. I feel personally responsible. And if, uh, if I knew you were unhappy, I would have found another job for you. And one of the things about that is, is that this was a $2 billion company I was working for, and they had 2,000 employees. You know, there was another job for me there. And I actually felt kind of bad because I just left, right? Nobody knew I was unhappy. I, I, just walked, I just walked out the door. So I really took it to heart that I would never leave a job again without telling them about how unhappy I was. And then I made sure that when I became a leader, that I made the point of talking to my people about, hey, if you're unhappy, you need to let me know. A, a stay interview does not replace an exit interview. What we're really trying to do is get the voice of the employee, right? So if you think about, you know, we do, we do uh, IDPs and you say, well, Jeff, you know, IDPs gives us some insight to that. But one of the negatives on an IDP is, is that it's, you're really talking, uh, um, you're talking to the employee quite a bit versus the employee is, is, is talking most of the time and you're listening. And another thing too about the IDP is it dilutes the conversation. Because in the IDP, you're going to say, well, you need to improve your time management. You need to improve your budgeting. You need to do this. You need to take 17 courses in here and everything else. And then it's, oh, by the way, what, what would make you want to leave, right? And, it, and you're really not building that rapport enough to build that relationship that, that you're really starting to get a, a better, better, uh, better information. Employee surveys. So we used to do employee surveys at the uh, any firm that I did too. And we would sit there, and I kid you not, uh, that we would spend two hours arguing that the questions that were that the way they were phrased was incorrect, and that the data that we got that we were so bad was not right. And then we and, and then I wanted to scream at them and said, "You're right, it's not right. We are actually worse." <laughs> so you know, so there's pluses and minuses and all. The biggest thing is we got to get the voice of, voice of the of the of our our employees. So so the benefits of conducting these interviews, you know, shows that you care, builds trust, increases open honest communication, allows for mutual conversation, gives you viable information, shows pattern and data to reflect. So a stay interview focuses on what motivates your employees to stick around. It's what what could be better about their job experience and how they envision the next day, day in their career. The biggest thing about a stay interview that's important is that it needs to be in a comfortable environment. I recommend um, offsite in a coffee house over lunch. You really want to build uh, build rapport. Another thing, it should be with between the, the manager and the employee. I get some companies that want to push back and say, "Well, Jeff, I think stay interviews should be should be given um, by HR." So it's really important about what's important to the employee. Uh, uh, I do uh, recommend at least once a year. So. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, my, you know, my consulting business was totally wiped out. You know, I thought to myself, uh, me and my wife, we, we bought matching pajamas and we said, oh, we can wait out 14 days, right? <laughs> and everything else. And uh, after six months went by, after nine months went by, well, you know what? I, 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 I need to go get a job. And I took a job as a, as a operations manager at a biopharmaceutical firm. And, and you talk about madness where we were increasing our production by 300%. We had to add, add a whole, uh, uh, you know, 60 new hires. Uh, you know, I had 40% of my people out on COVID and, and, and we had a high turnover. And one of the things is, is I did a stay interview with a key supervisor. He was a day shift supervisor that he was the quarterback, right? Everything beat to the drum because, you know, the way formulation works, you don't finish a batch on one shift. You know, you it goes starts on one shift and, and you do different processes and you end on third shift. So I did a stay interview. I thought he was happy as heck. Boom. He said, you know what, Jeff, I am, I am unhappy and I'm looking for a new job. And man alive, my stomach turned over. I thought, oh my gosh, we're at this such critical time that we're doing this. And one of the things uh, that, that we did there, I was able to, you know, figure out what he was doing. He wasn't being listened to. He didn't see a clear career path, you know, all of this going on. And, and so I started doing it more frequently with him. And he's still with the company. I'm not, <laughs> but he's still with the company. And I started doing it really uh, on a daily basis. <laughs> no, <laughs> but but I would do it at least once a month with him about revisiting. How are you doing? Are, are we are are you getting things? So you know, once a year. But when you identify it, best practices, don't combine a stay interview with a performance review. I got pushed back on this yesterday uh, when I did this. It's a separate thing. I realize it's one more thing to do. You want to ask questions that are both positive, and negative to uh, to the company as a whole, and the job. 
uh, let the employees know that uh, the changes that were going to be made and don't dismiss, trivialize, or explain away employees' answers. All right, so here's the questions. Um, I recommend 10. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be these 10, but I don't recommend 25 or, or, or anything like this. It should be 10. So, so the questions I recommend, uh, uh, what do you look forward to when you come to work? What do, you, what do you like most and least? What keeps you working here? If you could change something, what would it be? What would make your job more satisfying? What do you like? Uh, how do you like to be recognized? What talents are not being used? Uh, what would you like to learn here? What motivates you? What can I do best to support you? Which I love that question. Even in an IDP, I, I, that should be a question. What can I do more or less as your manager? And what might tempt you to leave? Yeah, you have to ask that question, right? Uh, because that's the whole purpose of this. We really want to find out information uh, uh, about why people are leaving, why people are staying. And we really want to create a culture of staying, you know, that we really have to understand that, that people are leaving for a reason and that we have to address those reasons. And one of the biggest things is that people don't feel listened to. So I need five volunteers. All right, Mark, batter up. You got the first question. So what we're going to do is we're, we're all of Mark's supervisors. So Mark has 50, 50 supervisors. So I brought them all in, Mark. <laughs> we we want to hear it. So so Mark is going to give his answer, and then we're going to analyze his answer. We're going to ask ourselves, is this person potentially at risk? Mark, what do you like most and least about working here? I enjoy the technical challenge. I enjoy doing the engineering calculations. I enjoy, um, I, I enjoy interfacing with my clients. All right. Least, Mark, what do you like least about working here? Um, what I, what I like least about the, uh, here would be the negative chatter that might be in the office, the lack of a career path, um, and not an understanding of what it takes to get promoted. All right. All right. So we're going to do a poll here. So is this employee at risk of leaving? All right. So 77% said, said yes. And do you see uh, uh, you see the information that, that you got there? His first answer, what you like most, I was thinking, boy, he's pretty happy, right? You know, boy, he really likes his job. And But do you see the second half of that are some very, uh, you know, lack of career career promotion uh, under that. that. That could be huge for anybody mid-year or, or, or beginning of the year and how important that is. And, and you can see where that person might, might leave. The thing that gets me, is now as a, as a leader, what follow up question would you want to ask Mark? See, let's get Craig. Craig, what he he just told you that that there's lack of of career advancement. What what follow up question would you would you want to what what follow what follow up question would you ask Mark after that reply? Um, I don't know that I have the exact phrasing, but I would ask him about what he's looking for in a career advancement. What does it mean to him? What's what's he looking for? Is it more responsibility? Is it, you know, taking on bigger projects, you know, just to understand it more? Yeah, great, great answer. Great answer. And you see that how that opens up the dialogue. And do you see where it's you start listening now? So this is this is one of my favorite uh, articles out there. Why employees uh, stay? This is from Harvard Business Review. They stay because of job satisfaction, comfortable with the culture, values are aligned. Has anybody seen the year of this? This is 1973. <laughs> There's nothing new here, right? There's nothing new here. There's opportunity. You know, I mentioned that we have a we're in a leadership pandemic. The, one of the reasons I'm here is I had three awful bosses at one time, and then they were unbelievably awful. And I said, you know what? I need to stop. I need I, I need to help uh, help leaders develop. And this is one of the things is you're going to get information to make a, a meaningful a, a meaningful change in your culture.